Now let's talk about records in Haskell and why we would use a record over a list. So first let's remember what a list is. A list was something like if we had scores and we said scores was a list of int from earlier and scores could be equal to, let's say it was grades, right? So 99%, 88%, 56%, that guy failed it and 83%. So we had a list and everything inside of the list was an integer or an int, right? And that's all we can put in there though. If we say this is an int, all of these have to be ints. We can't have an int and a string and a char and a double. They all have to be of the same type, right? So we can't say 99 cat, a char might be a, and a double would be like 83.44444. Okay, this, this isn't okay to do in an array. And, but what if we need something more complex? Like we want to model a student and they have a name, a major, an age, and a GPA. Well, a name and major are strings. An age is going to be an integer and a GPA is going to be a double, right? Because it has a decimal. Uh, so we can't do that with lists, but we can do that with records. So to create a record in Haskell to model what a student looks like, we're going to use again what's called a record so we can say data and we can say student so this is kind of the model for student equals and we're going to say student and this student's going to have some attributes that are related to the student right and i'm going to indent this okay uh, the indentation looks a little crazy if you're coming from any other language. Um, if you're not, that's okay. Then it probably looks nor Then it's the first thing you've seen. It looks normal, right? Um, so a student has a name. And we're going to say the name is a string. We're not assigning him a name right here. So we wouldn't say name equals Bob. We're going to say, hey, this student that we're modeling has a name. And the name is a string, some type of string. We don't know the string yet, but it's a string. Then underneath, we can say, we're gonna add a comma because we have to kind of list these out. So comma, age, the student has an age, right? Well, they also have a major, so let's do major first. And the major is also a string. So biology, chemistry, etc. Then we have the student has an age and their age is some type of integer or int, right? 23, 24, 33, 34. Then underneath, the last thing they have is probably a GPA, not a gap, a GPA. There we go. And their GPA is going to be a double, right? 3.6, 3.5, 2.7, 2 depending on how they do. So their GPA is a double. And I'm just going to line this up. Okay, so that's how we model a student. Now we need to, now we can create new students, new instances of students based on the record that we have here. So now that we have our record set up, our model for how each student should look, we can now come down into our main and create new students based off of that model. So we can say let student1 equal, and to say we're going to use, hey, we want to use a student record, we can type out student from above, and then we're going to use the brackets that we have above, and instead of being generic and saying, hey, name is a string, now we assign um, a name to something. So for example, we would say name is no longer string name is now equal to Alice. So the name of the student is Alice, comma, and then we kind of list out the other things like we have up here. So major equals biology, biology, yep, comma, and then we have an age, right? And the age has to be an int based on our model above. So age equals and it has to be an int so we'll say 27 and then gpa equals and again above our gpa is a double which means it's a decimal number so we could say like 3.6 so now what we've done is we've created a new student based on our model up here and we've given the student all of these different pieces of information and we stored our new student inside of student one so there's one more thing we have to do before we can print out our new student to the console. Okay, so Haskell usually, right, we could use put string ln for strings, right? So let's say Alice, we could print Alice, or we could say print, if it's anything but a string, we could say like 37. We could also print a list 
this will print to the console. But if we're making a record, Haskell doesn't know about this yet. Haskell doesn't know. We, we made this. We hand constructed this. Haskell knows about lists and numbers and strings, but it doesn't know about this record that we made. This is new to Haskell. So to tell Haskell that, hey, we want to be able to print this record to the console, we need to add something to the end of this record. And to add that, we say deriving show. And show, we're going to get into later this deriving show. But for now, we just need to know that in order to print this to the console, we have to add this deriving show. Okay, and if we remember, we had earlier the show function like this, and it took in a number. And then it Haskell knew that we wanted to print that number as a string. We could think of it as a similar concept for now. So it allows us to print this record to the console. So now we can come down here and say print student one. If we tried to say print student one without putting this deriving show on our record, we won't be able to print student one. So give, you can give that a try without deriving show, see what it does, and then try it with deriving show, which we're about to do. So save it. Head over to the console, clear it, reload, and run. And now we get our student one printed to the console. And because we have this student record, now we can create multiple students based on it. And we don't have to worry about if we accidentally type in like a string is 27. If we do that and try and run it in our console, it's going to throw an error saying, hey, age can't be a string, right? So this record ensures us that the types of our values are correct for each student. So we could do let student two equals a new student, right? We're going to say name equals Austin major equals teaching or education age equals 25 and GPA equals 3.7. Okay, so now we've just that easily we've been able to create a second student. Now we could also create like a third, fourth, fifth student, right? Could copy that down and we can print each student, right? So we can still print student one and we don't have to, because we're saying, hey, we want to be able to print any student that we make. We don't have to specify for each student that we want to be able to print it. So we can be able to print student two also. If we made a third, we could also print that. So save, head over here, clear reload and run, and now we get both of our students. So now we have our students made, now we wanna access data in our students. If you remember back to lists, in lists we could access each particular item in the list by using indexes, and we could get anything from the list. Now in records we can access anything from the record, but we don't use indexes, we do it differently, and this is how we'll do that. So instead of printing an entire student, let's say we want to get just the name from student one. So we could say something like put string ln, and we're going to use parentheses here, um, and we want to get the name. So now that we have these values of name, these variables, so to speak, of name equals Alice, major equals biology, these now become built-in functions that we can use to access the values on these variables. So we can say put string ln name, and I want the name of student one. And if I do that, we're going to first find the name of student one, which is Alice, and then we're going to put Alice to the console. So this name that we have assigned this variable now becomes a built-in function that we can use to access the value of name. So control S to save, head over to our console here, clear, reload, and run, and we're going to see it prints Alice, right, which is exactly what we want. And now if we want the name of student 2, well, we still have our name kind of built-in function for student 2, so we can just say instead of student 1, we'll say student 2, save, reload, and run, and now it prints out Austin. Now let's do one more. Let's say we want to get the GPA of student one, right? So we want to get that 3.6 from student one. Now a GPA is a double, right? So we need to print a double. So we can say print 
and we're going to say, still use parentheses because we want to get the kind of built-in function first, which would be GPA, not gap, GPA. So this is the built-in function that we use to access the double from student one. So GPA, student one. So we say, hey, we want the GPA from student one. And we're going to print it to the console. Control S, save. And over here, clear it, reload, and run. And we now get 3.6, right? And last one, let's do the age from student two. So age, student two, save. And note that age is an int, so it's okay to print an int. Clear, reload, run, and we get 25, the age of student two.